What's up friends and family, Chandler Henry here with Rise Magic and today we're doing one of our most requested troubleshooting videos and that is one on the Revolution Cut. Now I know there are already tons of tutorials out there for the Revolution Cut but that is not what this is. This is troubleshooting. So we're going to go over all the ins and outs on things that you might be struggling with when it comes to the Revolution Cut. So go ahead, strap in, buckle up, belts, everyone. do whatever you need to do to get ready to learn our spin on the Revolution Cut. And if you like that pun, be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe for more. All right, so let's hop into the troubleshooting segment of this video. I'm using the Zone Playing Cards by Bacopo Playing Card Company, who actually sponsored this video, which is pretty sick. So what's cool about this deck is if you want access to the cards, you can pull open the box like this and take them out like that. Or if you're feeling a little backwards, you can do the same thing on the other side of the deck. How freaking cool is that? Oh, and if you like these cards, they will be available via bacopo.com soon, or there will be a very limited stock on risemagic.com forward slash store. So the revolution cut, one of the fundamental one-handed cuts. This is how it looks. You take the top packet, and spin it right to the bottom. Hence the name, the revolution cut. Now, a lot of you guys have been saying you struggle with this move basically because of your hand size. Here's the thing, that's not it. So we're gonna break it down with a little quick tutorial. And after that quick tutorial, we're gonna troubleshoot some of the things I think might help you learn this better. So to start off, you're gonna wanna do a Charlier cut. Starting Charlier grip, which means you're in this grip with your pointer and pinky on the two short ends of the deck with your middle and ring on the long end. You're going to lift up with your thumb, a small segment of the deck. And from here, you're gonna cock and get ready to spin. What that means is that your pointer finger is gonna come to this long side and kind of spin the deck backwards, the packet backwards like that. So your pointer finger moves down and using your middle and pointer, you're gonna kind of take this top packet and rotate it that way, right? to get ready to do a big spin because you want your spin to be as big as possible for the cut to look as good as possible, okay? So you have it, you lift up, transfer over with your pointer, rotate back, right? So your thumb is gonna kind of become parallel or uh, to this long end of the deck. And from here, this is where the spin happens. This is something that will take you a long time to get down smoothly. The rotation happens with your thumb and pointer in middle starts turning like that. As soon as it gets to about this point, your ring finger is going to lift up and take over where your thumb is to continue the rotation. Right? So it rotates, spins, ring finger helps rotate, your thumb is going to let go. That packet stays in this little pocket with your middle ring and pinky. Both your thumb and your pointer finger are gonna help boost the big packet up into the air so it can fall on top of that rotated packet. Pointer, middle thumb rotation, bring back, start the rotation, ring finger, bam. Now it's very hard for me to do in slow motion like that because this is such a muscle memory type thing for me right now, right? So it's just like that. Now, when you first start learning this, it's gonna look very choppy. It's gonna look like the rotation has multiple like hitches in it, right? So you're gonna have this hitch, this hitch, and then this hitch, and then probably the hitch when it closes too. It's gonna to look very segmented rather than one smooth rotation. The only way to fix this is by repetition, by constantly doing this over time and trying to get it as smooth as possible, right? Okay, so now that you know the basics of the Revolution Cut, here are two things I want you to keep in mind while troubleshooting this move. One is the position that the deck is being held in your hand. It's not necessarily going to be a textbook grip like this, right? If you want your rotation to be smooth, you're gonna wanna have a looser, more relaxed grip, right? That way, it'll lend itself to a more natural motion. If I were to try and do it in the exact position of like textbook grip right there, right? Well, keeping a rigid form, it wouldn't look as good or smooth, okay? 
So you're just going to want to have a relaxed grip, right? A nice relaxed grip when you push it up, when you rotate it back, and when you turn it. Now here's something that I think could lend itself to you learning quicker, or things like that. I've been doing the revolution cut for probably, I don't say five years, right? I still struggle if I'm doing a lot of cards. So if you're truly doing a cut where you split the deck in half, okay? And revolution cut a lot of cards, it's gonna be harder and more sloppy than if you're due just one fourth of the deck, right? So here's me doing more than half the deck. Didn't look that great, right? I'm, I'm clipping down with the Charlier. I'm doing a lot of the cards. And when you do a lot of cards like that, it's gonna be tough for it to remain one big packet without that happening, okay? In my opinion, it's best for the Revolution Cut if you're doing it with about one fourth of the deck or less, a very small amount of cards. In fact, you can even do this with one card and it'll still look pretty good. But I think the butter zone is I would say about one fourth of the cards and then you're nailing the revolution cut. But if you're trying to do half the deck like you would in a Charlier cut, right? You're gonna be in the struggle bus. Not the magic school bus, the struggle bus, all right? So our first two troubleshooting tips, relax grip, amount of cards you're doing. You want a smaller amount, a much smaller amount. Those two should help you a lot. Now here's the thing that's gonna vary for a lot of you, okay? This is actually the most important thing that I've found into making the rotation smooth. And that is the location of the pivot points on the fingers that are turning it. And by that, I mean how high up or how low down they are on your fingers. Here's what I mean. If I were to do it with my fingers at the very top, what I mean by that is this rotating pack would be like close to my nails, like up here. And there would be almost barely any contact when I'm doing that rotation. Or in the polar opposite sense, you could do it and have it be happening down low in your fingers. I can't even get them that low when I'm doing it, right? For you guys, this is gonna vary based on your hand size. I have pretty big hands being six foot nine, and when I do the revolution cut, what I've found is the best area for me to do it is right on these knuckles on your fingers, the knuckles that are closest to your nail. These are my pivot points, so see when I grip it there, Look, it's right in line with that knuckle, this packet. Same when I connect with my middle finger. And when I connect with my ring finger for me, it's actually a little bit higher than the knuckle when it's turning. And my thumb is not at the knuckle, right? That would be down way too low for me. I have it up on my thumb. Now I can't tell you to do it just like me because your hands aren't the same size as mine, okay? You're gonna have to experiment and figure out what area works best for you for you to get the most smooth motion, okay? Now, lastly, once you finish the rotation right here, your thumb and your pointer finger are what's clearing this packet up so that this can go down. When I first started doing the revolution cut, what would always happen is this pointer finger would get in the way of me closing it, and I couldn't remove it without causing a mess. It sounds cliche, but this is something that will naturally be removed through practice, okay? Once you rotate it and your pointer finger helps boost that packet up along with your uh, thumb, you're gonna get used to basically this happening. As you close, this bottom packet won't get hit on your pointer finger, it'll just kinda go above it and underneath it. So instead of focusing on moving your pointer finger out of the way, just focus on getting that cut as smooth as possible. And I believe the longer you do it, the more it'll happen naturally. So, if you came into this video struggling with the revolution cut, right? Here are the three things I want you to remember. Loosen grip, small amount of cards, where that pivot point is on your fingers, it's gonna vary for everyone. And lastly, making sure it's one smooth motion when you get that pointer finger out of the way. And once you follow those steps, you'll have a revolution cut that'll make all the kids jealous. All right guys, I really hope that troubleshooting I just provided for you has really helped you finally master, or at least be able to start mastering the revolution cut. 
By the way, if you guys like the music going on throughout this video and in the intro, it's actually made by someone I know in real life. His name is Will Carter and he goes by Tree Theater for his music name. And he has a new EP out called Garden, which is where the songs that you're hearing came from. You guys know I love plugging awesome music on this channel, whether it be in tutorials or performances. So I really think if you like the music I use on this channel a lot, you'll definitely like Tree Theater's new album Garden. Go ahead and check it out via the link in the description. It's got like this cool mix of like indie, instrumental, cool things like that. Anyway, hope you guys like this video. If you do, you know the drill. I'm not even gonna say it at this point. Yeah, do that. All right, peace out. Yeah, yeah, so here's what I'm thinking, right? When I'm talking about the Revolution Cut, I'm gonna be like, yo, check out our spin on it. You know what I'm saying? It's not that bad.